The Calling, A Life Rocked by Mountains is a gripping memoir by Barry Blanchard, one of North America's most prominent alpinists, which takes the reader through his vivid life story, punctuated by his passion for high-altitude climbing and the indomitable pull of the mountains. Born in 1959 in Calgary, Alberta, Blanchard grew up in a tumultuous family environment, marked by economic hardship and personal challenges. Despite his dyslexic struggles with education and the absence of his biological father, he found solace and direction in the wilderness around him. Blanchard's narrative captures his ascent from a scrappy, rebellious youth to an esteemed figure in the mountaineering community. His journey begins with small-scale rock climbing during his teenage years, leading to full-fledged escapades in the Canadian Rockies and eventually to the most perilous and remote peaks in the world. Blanchard's exploits up the sheer faces and treacherous ice fields of iconic mountains such as Mount Waddington, Mount Robson, and Mount Assiniboine are documented in vivid detail, showcasing not only his physical prowess, but also his evolving philosophy of alpinism. The memoir details Blanchard's pioneering climbs and first ascents, revealing the fierce determination, critical decision-making, and pure athleticism required in the vertical world of high-stakes climbing. His foundational climb on the Andromeda Strain in the Canadian Rockies is a testament to his skill and boldness. The climb would go on to become a classic test piece for aspiring alpinists. Another significant milestone narrated in the book is his harrowing ascent on the North Pillar of North Twin during the spring of 1985. The North Twin climb, emblematic of Blanchard's tenacity, secured his reputation as an elite alpinist. Beyond his exploits in Canada, Blanchard's memoir takes the reader around the globe, highlighting expeditions in distant ranges like the Himalayas, where he faced not only the physical challenges of high-altitude climbing, but also internal battles. His attempts on the unclimbed east face of Mount Everest in 1982, 1983, and 1988 are recounted with introspection, revealing the mental and emotional toll of such daunting endeavors. Blanchard confronts profound questions about his own mortality, the ethics of risk-taking, and the impact on loved ones left waiting at home. A pivotal thread throughout the book is Blanchard's involvement in the 1984 ascent of Mount Fay's North Face with David Cheesemond, marking a significant event in alpine climbing history. This expedition exemplifies the camaraderie and interdependence that can develop between climbing partners. Blanchard underscores the deep bonds formed with fellow climbers like Cheesemond, Kevin Doyle, and Carl Tobin, and recounts the crushing loss of friends claimed by the mountains, capturing the sport's inherent duality of elation and heartache. Blanchard's account is not without personal introspection and growth. He writes candidly about the evolution of his principles, his responsibilities as a father, the struggle to maintain relationships while pursuing a demanding climbing career, and his role as a mentor to younger climbers. His reflections on fatherhood provide a compelling look into the difficulties of balancing a life consumed by the perils and call of the mountains with the duties of raising a family. As his career continues, Blanchard transitions into more of a guiding role, with the narrative exploring the shift in his relationship to climbing. He draws on his extensive experience to share lessons and insights with clients eager to learn from a master of the craft. Throughout, Blanchard's deep connection with the natural world pervades every expedition account, every recounted conversation, and every philosophical musing. His environmental and cultural sensitivity is also apparent in his dealings with the local populations in the regions he explores. He grapples with the ethics of high-altitude tourism and its impact on indigenous cultures, always mindful of the broader implications of his pursuits. This respect expands to those who accompany him on his journeys, the Sherpas and porters who are integral to the success of such complex expeditions, often without receiving the same recognition as Western climbers. Blanchard's writing style mirrors the terrain he traverses, at times stark and direct, while also lush with descriptions of the raw beauty and terror found in the mountains. His prose manages to bring the reader into the intense, often congested atmosphere of high-altitude climbing filled with sublime sunrises, the roar of avalanches, and the icy caress of relentless storms. His emotive recollections convey not just the physicality of his accomplishments, 
but also the soulful engagement with a lifestyle that is relentless, rewarding, and introspective. As he grows older, Barry Blanchard continues to climb, albeit with a greater awareness of his limitations and the shifting purposes behind his pursuits. He confronts the aging process, the wear on his body, and the changing landscape of climbing culture with a reflective eye, recognizing his place in the continuum of mountaineering history. He uses his later expeditions to bridge the divide between his early renegade approach and a more sustainable, seasoned perspective. The Calling, A Life Rocked by Mountains, is a testament to the power of mountains to shape a life. It is a narrative rich with adventure, human connection, and the pursuit of dreams against daunting odds. Blanchard's thrilling yet introspective journey through the highest realms of the earth offers an inspiring and layered view of a life dedicated to exploring the vertical world. The memoir concludes as more of a pause than an ending, suggesting that for Blanchard, the call of the mountains is an enduring one, echoing in the recesses of his being, inviting him back, time and again, to the edges where earth meets sky. You can listen to the full audiobook for free by following the URL in the description.